Welcome to Quick Food for Carers. I'm Nick Pandolfi. This is Chef James Barber, and we're here on the Suffolk coast. If you ever get the chance, come and visit the White Lion Hotel. Absolutely amazing. Chef James, thank you so much for joining us on Quick Food for Carers. Good morning, Nick. How are you? I'm really good. We've got to say a massive thank you um, because we made a, made a little bit of a mistake. We thought we knew we, we knew we were cooking outside. We got the chef, we got the food, we got the great recipes from you. We forgot to bring the cooking equipment. <laughs> okay. Standard. Yeah. But you've come to the rescue with uh, your little old friend here. We have this, we have this. We bought this when our kitchen was getting a refurb and they were building sea spice and our kitchen got cut in half to accommodate the new restaurant. And of course we have, we've got a service kitchen up here which is what they call a satellite kitchen, which we send the food from, but we prepare most of it downstairs. So in the meantime, we had actually no cooking appliances down here, so it was all a bit of a struggle. So we bought this as a real quick fix, but it's become a bit of a lifesaver, actually. And we, we take it everywhere. If we ever go anywhere or ever in a spot of bother or the gas goes down, we've got, we've got this, um, and it's great. really works well. Well, as we move around the country, we try and find out from the chefs with regards to who was their inspiration, if they did have an inspiration. You're an award-winning chef. Uh, you, you've got a huge fan base with regards to what you do and what, where you're sort of taking food here, the TA Hotels, the group that actually own uh, this particular hotel. Who was your inspiration? Was there one? Was it, was it the cliche? Was it your gran, your mum? Was it a relative? Um, I've, it's a very difficult one, to be honest. If I'm honest, uh, growing up, mum couldn't cook. And that was an inspiration to cook because you, were, you wouldn't want to eat her dinners. They weren't, they weren't nice. So <laughs> I think the truth is grandma was an amazing cook and you know, grandma would look after us and, and it was always the, the boyhood thing to make cakes with grandma, lick the bowl out and, and do all that sort of thing. So when I got to about 13, 14 and mum said, well, if you don't like my dinners, you can cook yourself. I said, you know what, I will. And I started cooking and she went, oh, okay. <laughs> You're quite good at this, aren't she you? She never cooked again. No, she didn't. And, um, <laughs> and even now, she cooks us a little bit herself now, but um, she still remembers that we made a cauliflower cheese. Um, and that was the first sort of dish that I'd done for the whole family, if you like. Um, and she said, I can't, but I put bacon in it just because I fancied a bit. I don't know. There was some bacon lurking around and I thought that might be nice. And she said, I can't believe you thought to do that. And I said, Nowadays, it's pretty obvious, isn't it, I think? But, um, yeah, so I suppose, and growing up, it was when Ramsay was in the limelight, and I suppose everybody wanted to be that superstar chef that was screaming and shouting at everyone, and uh, these days, it's a, it's a lot different, a lot different, and, you know, we don't shout and scream at our, not much at our, it depends who's watching it, doesn't it? <laughs> we don't shout and scream at our staff like we used to, and, and we treat them with a lot more respect, but it was that dream of sort of believing in in having something with your life and you know you could leave school and I don't think I've met one chef that's got A levels, one chef that got an A star in anything and I suppose it was something you could do if you weren't fantastic at school. Okay well we're going to talk fish because we're in Oldborough uh, across the road here um, we've got like fifth generation fishermen You've yep. got some sea bass for us, haven't you? We're going to do yep. something special with sea bass. And some people might think it's quite expensive, but it isn't. No, I think you can buy sea bass. You can buy, you can buy it in the supermarket. You can buy it. If you go and see Dean over in the, in the shack over there, he'll have sea bass, he'll have herring, he'll have lobster, cod, skate, depending on the season. Rock Hill's my, my latest find. It's quite cheap and delicious. Um, and I reckon, you know, a, a fillet of sea bass, 250, three quid, top, depending on the size. Because really good done, for you as well. It's fantastic. There's lots of... There's lots of oils in the fish, it's sustainable. You know, we talk about um, food miles. Well, I don't even think there's a mile there, you know. No, there isn't. So, you know, we, we like to buy what we can from, from the fishermen over the road. We do buy, we buy the sea bass, we buy rock eel. We're starting to buy some herring, cod, skate, Dover sole, flounder, things when they're about. So what we're gonna do with the sea bass today, we're gonna cook it in paper. So the French call it en papillot, which basically translates as in paper. And what I like about this is all the work's in the preparation. So if you can get it ready, you wrap it up, put it in the fridge, you can cook it that night, the next day, perhaps even the day after. And it's literally in the oven. Everything is concealed within the bag. And the, the process of that is you put a little bit of white wine inside and that steams and everything steams within this paper. So when you've cooked it, you cut it and it on the plate and your whole dinner's on the plate and the aroma and the smells just go straight to you because you've just cut the bag open of all that steam. Hungry already? I know I am. So what, what have we got here? <coughs> well, let's have a look on the table. We've got okay. a nice bottle of wine. We've got a lovely bottle of wine. Lovely muscadet. You can use any wine. If you can't bear to put your wine into this, and don't worry, just use a little bit of water. It is just to help with the steam because obviously if you're trying to steam and there's no moisture inside, nothing's... There's going to be nothing available to create the steam. So in the oven, it's like a big paper parcel then? Absolutely, absolutely. It looks a bit like a Cornish pasty in the shape of the paper. Okay. And it's quite important. So, with your paper, I'm going to put some potatoes at the bottom. One so 
everything is in your meal. You've got your potatoes, your vegetables, um, a few things in there for some flavour. And I always put the potatoes at the bottom because that stops your sea bass from being in direct contact with the tray, so it won't overcook and allow the steam to circulate so around little, the fish. It's a little rack then? Yeah, I think they call it a trivet, don't they? I a think, tri okay. A trivet. Um, so then some green beans. Again, you could put anything in here, really. If you have some munch too. Uh, broccoli, perhaps not so, because I think it would be slightly overcooked by the time it comes out. But if you're not offended by overcooked food, then that's up to you. Um, I put some olives in it, just because I love, I love the flavour of olives. I think they add a slight saltiness. You can cut back a little bit on the salt that you're using yeah. because of the natural salt. Yeah. Some sunblush tomatoes for very similar reasons, but again, they're very... And you can see you've, also, you've already got the basis of your vegetables and your potatoes that are going to create your meal. And great colours as well. Yeah, yeah. fantastic colours, fantastic colours. Fillet of sea bass, as I say, from over the road here. Depending on the size of the fish, I mean, because they are wild, you might end up with a slightly bigger fish, a slightly smaller fish. Um, so I'm going to place him here, just put a touch of salt and pepper on him. Nice sea salt. You can buy Suffolk sea salt these days as well, which is... Rather than going over the border to... Because <laughs> most people, around here, it's going to be um, about Essex. It's going to be a sort Molden. of... Yeah, Molden in way, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I, I like both, if I'm honest. They okay. have both... A little bit of garlic for some flavour. Just move some of these pots. I can't see. Yeah. OK, that's great. Lay your fish on top. Some basil for the nice flavour. Keep in with the sort of Mediterranean theme. Good splash of white wine. Water, if you... I want to put your white wine in there. That just helped create the steam. I can't. I can't. I'm. I'm terrible at wrapping parcels. Are you? Get close to Christmas. So I'm looking to see how you're gonna. How you're gonna. Yeah, Christmas presents. I'm not good at. Do you know what? It always gets. Mum used. To, I don't know. Mums always do it, don't they? Mums, mums know. You have the sellotape hanging off here, and there's lots of. Yeah, yeah. And then you and then you wrap the sellotape. Anyone else do that? It gets stuck to me. Yeah. Fold it over. So you have the fish in the middle. Crisp it. Fold it, crisp it, fold it, and you just do this all the way around. It's important that you just put that crisp on there and really push your finger along that line. And the bigger the, the paper bag, the better, realistically, because there's enough, enough air for it to steam. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There's some residents that's having breakfast. Or having, going for a walk now, as you do. In Oldborough. Perhaps going so, to see Dean get some fish. So is this just normal? So I, you may have mentioned this, but I've forgotten already because I'm like that. I'm terrible memory. Is this just normal parchment paper? Yeah, or normal paper? parchment paper. You can do it with tin foil if you, if you really want to. Could I, you? Yeah, I like doing it with paper because I like to be able to see inside the bag. And then you twist the end, which seals it up. Completely. I guess it breathes more as well, does it, if it's in paper? Yeah, it breathes a lot more, but you, you can if just butter the, the tin foil very slightly, otherwise it may stick. Fold it over in the same fashion. And then you can, it'd be easier to crimp with the tin foil. But then slip it in the oven at 20 minutes at 180. Bob's your uncle, and then you can just snip the whole lot, slide it onto your plate, and those aromas that will hit you will be amazing. Well, there's the Cornish pasties. You said it looks like a Cornish pasties. It pasty, does look right? a bit like a Cornish pasties. So I'm going to slip it, it on this tray. Yeah. And I'll take it through to the oven. OK. I will be back with a little bit of magic, ready to try out the food. Let's talk sea bass, Chef James. How long was this in the oven? It's had about 18 minutes. At what temperature? 190. 190, 20 minutes, and, and still looks like a Cornish pasty, a big one. It still does, and you can see where these, the air is here, look. And as we open it up, you're going to get hit with the most beautiful smell. Again, you could do this with any fish. You want to do it with cod. Some, I know someone that's done it with chicken. I don't know if that works. I've never done it myself. Um, salmon, it would work. Trout, it would work. Herring, mackerel. Absolutely anything, and you can put anything you like in it, any flavours you like. And you've got scissors, you're gonna, yeah. you are going to open the parcel. Yeah, so this traditionally in France would be done at the table in front of the guests. So as you sat at your table, and it's amazing, we put this on the menu, and as soon as one person orders it, the whole dining room begins to order it. And you can just see the flavours coming out there. Oh, I, I would often just slide it off onto the plate, but you could eat it from the bag if you want to be a bit more traditional. I like to do that. Look at that. There you go. That's really, really lovely. Molly, are you seeing that? That's gorgeous. And you can and smell. And the smell. Just reminds us of the smell in there. I mean, it's just we've got, we haven't really got that much in there, but I can smell the tomatoes. Yes. Yeah. They're really coming yeah, through. Yeah, you can really smell. You almost feel like you could be in the Mediterranean, couldn't you? Right. Chef, you've Let's got to um, 
You go first. Okay. I love the olives. I'm going for an olive. I was thinking, I was always told if you should always get a little bit of everything, shouldn't you? You should. So we've got a little bit of bean, yeah. tomato, olive, and the fish. That's good. I told you I could cook, didn't I? You could, yeah. <laughs> I reckon you've got the job. I reckon you've got the job. I don't really like fish on the whole. I'm not. I'm a meat person. But this is absolutely beautiful. You've really got to try it. Recipes on the website. Find us on Facebook as well. Family Carers Net. James, thank you so much. Thank you, Nick.